All right, take a deep breath. And start relaxing all the body tension. And relax is another word for release. Whenever you relax, you let go up. So give it back to life. Let it flow out of your body and into the universal. Take a couple more deep breaths and relax more, release more, give away more. Become one with the sound of the ocean. Make no distinction between that perception and your body. I like to start my meditations when it comes to going deeper with emphasizing that sense of oneness with all form, just enough to generate a sense of universality or oneness, presence, where the focus of one's sense of self is no longer so much the body. Because as our bodies interact with the objects that we perceive, during the day we gather, we accumulate a sense of self located in the body. And the body can't meditate. The body can only be the body. It can either tense up or relax. Relaxation is preferable, but either way, the body is not doing the meditation. And neither is the ocean, nor the sounds of the birds. Yet to relax that sense of isolation and separation and flow into a heightened state of consciousness, it can be good to, just for a few moments, focus on things outside your body and give them back to that universal presence. Meaning, simply understand that whatever sounds you hear, sights you see, feelings you feel, thoughts you have, all of that belongs to that universal principle, that universal consciousness, that universal creator, that universal dreamer.
When I say universal, it is synonymous with totality. It's the wholeness. So get into that sense of non-separation, oneness, wholeness, seamlessness, pervasiveness. Simply by understanding again that no experience, no perception, no form, no manifestation can exist apart from the universal beingness. However, this does not necessarily take you deeper into self-recognition or self-realization. Self-realization means awareness of self. The ocean, the universe, all of that is still just a projection of the self, a mirror reflection. But it is not actually the self directly. It is still the dream. So there's something prior to the dreamer and its dream. The dreamer, which is that universal principle of consciousness or beingness, and its dream, which is that which we simply call the universe, are not two. They are not two independent existences. They are one. They are inseparable. Just like your dream at night. Everything you dream up in your dream at night is inseparable from your mind, the dreamer. So literally the universe exists due to, because of, inseparable from, and you could say inside of, that universal dreamer, that universal beingness, consciousness, God, creator, Now, there's no doubt that there's an intelligence which runs all this illusion, all this dreaming. So there's something real about it. However, it is still an illusion. Creation is not the self directly. You could say it's the self indirectly, perceiving a possibility of itself, but not itself directly. Just like when you look in the mirror and you see your face reflected, you know it's not your real face. Your real face is over here. It's prior to the mirror. It's before the mirror. The mirror will never be able to imprison your actual face. And yet it appears as if your actual self exists inside the mirror. And the image of yourself inside the mirror cannot exist apart from the mirror. In the same way, you feel like you are inside of this universe, a part of this universe, a part of this manifestation, this creation, it feels like yourself is inside of this creation. But that is a sensation that is part of the dream inside the mirror, inside the dreamer, inside of that consciousness. Lovely and miraculous and powerful as that may seem, it is again not a direct understanding of the self. The oneness of all things belongs to the illusion of the mirror, of the dreamer. Even the understanding of the oneness of all things is still a part of the illusion. Before oneness, of the dream and the dreamer and all the things it dreams. There is the self, which is much more like an infinite void rather than an endless or eternal presence.
So first we go from body consciousness and body self-awareness to a sense of universality, the universal oneness sense of self or sense of allness, totality. So the bridge between the self and being lost in the dream, as most people are, the bridge, the middle point, you could say, is that state of present consciousness with the understanding, with the sensation, if you will, the knowledge, the knowingness, the instinctive recognition that all that is experienceable and experienced belongs to this consciousness, this I amness, this beingness, which is before words, before thoughts, before body, before mind. It is that which is, that primordial presence, isness, consciousness, beingness, intelligence, existence. That is God the creator aspect of the one. So we go from body consciousness to a universal sense of consciousness, a universal sense of isness, of all pervasiveness, of totality. And this is similar to, instead of focusing on your face in the mirror and completely believing that your face is the face that you see inside the mirror, to the bridge being becoming aware of the mirror itself. The fact that everything that you see in front of you actually only appears inside of and due to the mirror. The whole appearance that you see in front of you only appears due to and inside of the mirror. So there's a sense of oneness there, a sense of totality, a sense of inseparability. You can't really distinguish the wall from the face from the mirror because it is all the mirror. And that is the bridge, because when you look at your face in the mirror and you're completely enamored by your face, you're lost in the dream. But when you wake up, the first enlightenment, the first elevation, when you wake up to the fact that you're actually staring at a mirror, now instead of looking inside of the mirror at individual perceptions, you can look at the mirror itself and wake up to the fact that all that you see inside the mirror is actually made up of the mirror. This is the first elevation, that sense of oneness or godness, consciousness, pure consciousness, inseparable from its appearances. And as you may understand, this puts you that much closer to a realization of the fact that you're actually standing in front of, before, prior to the mirror, and that you can walk away from the mirror, that you're not dependent on the mirror or its reflections. You can't do that if you're enamored by what you see inside of consciousness, inside of the mirror. But if you see consciousness itself, if you see that universal principle which is responsible for all perception, if you have that firmly in your gaze, it is like the body suddenly staring at the mirror itself rather than the images inside of the mirror. And now it becomes possible to realize that you're actually existent prior to the mirror, that you don't have to believe that you are what you see in the mirror, and you don't have to believe that you are the mirror. So as wonderful and amazing as it is, and as powerful as it feels to realize the oneness of all things as they appear in the mirror, to realize that you are the mirror, as wonderful as that feels, it is still not a realization of what you are. It is a realization of the reflection of what you are, the expression of what you are, the creative aspect of what you are. But with or without that, you could say, the self exists. Like an infinity, a formless, infinite, indescribable perfection that is to our senses, to our mind, kind of like a void. It's void. It's not really a void because it's the reality. But it's a void to our imagination because we don't have the words or concepts to imagine infinity. To imagine that which has no form or quality yet exists as the sole reality. We have no capacity to imagine this. 
So the only way to get a sense of it is to rest at the mirror, to become aware of the mirror, the unity of all things as they appear in the mirror, the fact that all things are responsible that the mirror is responsible for all things, caused, causing all things. The mirror is what's causing all perception. Nothing exists apart from the mirror. Nothing exists apart from the consciousness. Nothing appears apart from this God consciousness, this universal beingness, this isness that you can sense right now. You can become aware of the mirror inside yourself. That which is one step removed from the truth of the absolute self by becoming aware of consciousness itself, beingness itself, this brimming, alive, all-pervasive isness itself. And you make that bigger and brighter, you realize more and more of the mirror. You avoid getting distracted by any of the images that you see inside the mirror. You ignore the temptation to go inside of any individuated perception, thought, temptation, desire, idea, form, so that you may become aware of the mirror itself, the consciousness itself, the principle responsible for all the individual perceptions, which itself is not individuated. It is an allness. It is a wholeness. It is that beingness. Become more aware of the beingness at the root of all perception at the root of your experience of the body, the mind, the universe, at the root of that, at the core of that, the first experience that contains all other experiences thereafter is the I am experience before words, just the sheer I am experience of I am, I am, I exist. The mind cannot really know this experience. Only you can know this experience. And as you witness beingness, as you witness the I am principle, the I exist, ask yourself, what is looking at this I am? What is it that this I amness is rubbing off against? It's causing a friction between, so to speak. What is it that allows for this I amness to be known? What is farther back even than consciousness? What is before witnessing? Isness. Who am I, the I that is watching all this presence, all this experiencing, all this love, bliss, isness, beingness? What is it that's looking at the mirror which contains all the forms? What is I? What is me? What is self? Turn backwards 180 degrees. From where is presence witnessed? From where is consciousness witnessed? From where is isness known? From where is the totality of universal isness known? I am before that universal isness. Now you can either try to pull back from isness as if you're getting sucked through a black hole that's behind your body, behind your sense of consciousness, and try to worm your way backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards. And backwards. Farther back, farther back, beyond this, I'm not this, I'm not that. Give away all perceptions repeatedly, consistently, frequently. Not this, not that, backwards, backwards. What is real? What am I? 
This too I see, then what is I? If I see this, then what is the I that sees this? Further back, further back, further back. Or you can try to imagine or realize that you are already there. You can't go backwards into yourself. You are that which knows the experience of going backwards into yourself. You're already as far back as you ever could be. It's only the body, mind, imaginary sense that creates the sensation of I need to find myself behind this experience. But in truth, something already recognizes all that. Something is already beyond all that. You're already the absolute. You're already formless. You're already fully liberated from this whole universe. None of it has ever affected you. Nothing can affect an infinite void. Everything that is affectable is not you as the infinite. All that can move and change and be affected happens inside the mirror, which is consciousness. Consciousness is not real. If consciousness would quit its job today, cease to be, you would remain. That is what's real. That's what's truly eternal, timeless. It's already you. It's not a sensation. It's not a picture. It's not a sense, a sense organ. It's none of the senses. It's none of the body. It's none of the earth. It's not the thinker. It's not thoughts. It is not emotions. It is not feelings. It is not the universe. You are that which is everything but the universe, everything but consciousness and perception. Perception is not you. None of perception is you. Only you are you. Perception appears, consciousness arises as the first experience that the infinite has of itself in a limited way.
the oneness of all things is a limitation resting upon the surface of an infinite reality. Nothing your body or mind or any of your bodies or minds have ever gone through, experienced, felt, processed, thought about, none of that has ever reached you. None of that will ever touch you. None of that will ever become reality. It is only imagination. It is only memory. It is only thought. Universal beingness is the first type of thought within the infinite. It's the first type of imagination. Is that of I am, of beingness, of presence, of consciousness. It's the first type of thought, the first type of imagination the first type of mind. And we call it God, but it's really just a thought. Of course it's infinitely intelligent in what it can produce because it's borrowed imagination from the infinite absolute perfection. That doesn't make it real though. Just because something is endless in its variety and its intelligence and its design doesn't make it real. It can still be an illusion. No one's ever said it's not an intelligent illusion. It's just an illusion. The self is not a thing. cannot be explained or experienced by any means that you have at your disposal as a body, as a mind, as the senses. You are already that before you engage with any of the thoughts and the words and the concepts and the feelings and senses. So if you simply take attention away from that and point it backwards, if you will, symbolically speaking backwards, and try to realize the self onto which this beingness has been projected. What about you has no form? What about you has no quality and is therefore infinite? and therefore real. If infinity had a quality, how could it be infinite? Only consciousness is qualities. But you witness qualities. You witness consciousness. You as the absolute are beyond consciousness. 